Welcome to Mooney Reads, and this is the beginning of another vlog. Throughout the course of this week, um, question mark, I, I never know really how long shit's gonna be. Primarily, I would like to be focused on my library books, which I hold in my last vlog. Um, so I'm gonna be reading through them, hopefully fairly quickly, since most of them are small enough. And I will also be listening to some audiobooks, which are all technically library books. I think I own maybe three audiobooks if you have access to Audible after you quit. I did a free trial once, so I have an audiobook with them and two on CD. Not that that matters. Uh, so I'll be talking about the books that I'm reading on Hoopla, the books that I'm reading library books, and I also have buddy reads going on that I might end up talking about as well. I don't have a specific order that I'm going to get to all of these in, however, there's one that's due in a week instead of two, so I'll probably start with it, and that is going to be Wake, The His Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts. This is the only nonfiction in this pile, um, so... This is what I'll start with, unless I start an audiobook at work, which is possible. I am leaving for work immediately after this, so um, this will probably be the first one that I talk about, though. I can read it in, like, a sitting um, or two. I'll read it probably today and tomorrow. I'm technically starting this vlog at, like, the tail end of the other vlog because all I have to do is watch a movie for the other one, so... Uh, plans uh, are to start with this book and then go from there. I also have buddy reads that I'll be reading during this vlog, um, as well as one nonfiction that I've started, but it's very short. So maybe I'll work on that throughout the week too. Right, it's later in the day. Ooh, it is now later in the day. I'm back from work. And I did actually finish a book. I started it at an audio book while I was at work. It was actually one that I had already checked out of Hoopla, but just hadn't started. Um, and then I finished it when I got home. And that's the fifth Murderbot book, I think, um, Exit Strategy. And it is excellent. I fucking love the Murderbot series. I kind of wish that I picked it up earlier. And I think that the fact that I have read all of these in audio form was an excellent decision. I love Murderbot's, like, voice. The, I don't know if atmosphere is the right word. It's just really great. Um, the whole premise of the series is that there is this um, robot, but he's also got organic parts. So he's, like, seen very much as a robot or something purely mechanical, but does have emotions and the like, but is not treated as though he does. He was created in order to be a murder for hire, pretty much, or s security, but also murdering. He hacks his own um, part of his system so that he can act without the company that owns him kind of knowing or having that much control over him. And this series is kind of his journey. Um, it's super cool. Throughout the whole thing, you see more and more um of Murderbot and I don't want to say too much but it really explores a lot of things adjacent to trauma um also things like friendship I think there's a really great analogy in here about um like neurodivergence um to a certain extent as well um and there's a lot of diversity in the side characters so it's really wonderful. It's really engaging. So I highly recommend that. Martha Wells is a genius. I have just made my food. So you're kind of in an inconvenient place, miss. You can't have this. Um, uh, so I'm actually probably going to spend my evening, or I guess late afternoon. No, oh, four o'clock is the evening. Um, uh, watching if Beale Street can talk for my other vlog. 
Um, but if I end up picking up a book afterwards, I'll check back in. Um, yeah. Okay, it's whatever the fuck today. It's Sunday? It's Sunday. Um, afternoon? About one? My plan at like 10.30 this morning was maybe that I would eat and then like chill out and read for a couple hours. Um, but my phone screen is kind of busted. I'm lucky that it didn't impact the camera because there is one little, little crack that like over time will definitely inch towards the front facing camera. So I've just been spending some time freaking out about that looking at the cheapest possible phone, um, which, at the very least, phones that have a decent amount of space and decent cameras are less expensive than when I got this one. I'm looking at refurbished ones. Um, and I found one that I think is good, but I'm waiting for my mom to respond because I want her opinion before I buy something. So, an elastic effort to at least do something relaxing or something before I have to go to work. I want to spend a little bit of time reading. I know that I have to turn awake in before the rest of them and I really do want to get to the charm offensive. However, this is supposed to be like soft and hopeful. Um, so I think I think this is what I'm going to start with. A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. The unfortunate thing about my phone breaking, too, is that this is the phone that my Libby and Hoopla app are on. And because I don't really want... I'm pointing at the shit as though you could see it. Since Libby and Hoopla are on this phone... Or I guess that's not going to make sense to goddamn anyone. My phone situation is kind of fucked because the phone that I film with and do all of my Instagram, have all of my apps on, that uh, doesn't carry 4G. Clearly, if you saw my Wordle up, you'll know that I know nothing about technology. My phone service can't be on this phone because it's too old, but the free phone that they sent me is too shitty to use for anything other than texts and phone calls and browsing the internet. Um, it doesn't have that much space on it, and the, the camera's a potato. So, that phone I'm gonna bring to work so that I can, like, you know, call someone if my car breaks down. But knock on got fucking wood, the last thing I need is an extra thing. So I've gotta leave this phone at home, which means I won't have any audiobooks. Which kinda sucks, but I think I'll live. I don't guess this could've happened at a convenient time, but feels particularly inconvenient because Remy has to go to the vet soon too to get her blood work done and I'm also trying to save up to like leave the state and this isn't as big of a monetary thing as something else but The last thing I need is for, like, everything to happen all at once, and then suddenly I'm stuck in the shithole apartment for another, like, six months. Can't deal with that. And instead of having a panic attack, I'm gonna finish my coffee and read the soft robot book. This morning or afternoon it was afternoon between this afternoon and 
being at work and reading a little bit on my 15. Um, I got about that far into the book. Probably between a third and a half. Roughly a third. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I'm really liking it so far. It's got a really interesting vibe to kind of the world in general. So this is futuristic. Uh, there's a part of nature that humans aren't really in. But then the part that humans are in, it feels like nature and technology is very integrated. Um, but the technology is like in some places lower scaled and in some cases higher scaled. Like it's super, super high quality, but not everything necessarily is automated. Like they're on bikes, but they have computers that are supposed to last a lifetime. And it's not quite steampunk, uh, especially because there's specific things that go with steampunk that are like older. But I think that blend of like, Kind of the tech and uh, nature is there. It's like a, but some of it also feels older because there's stuff like the bicycles and the fact that they're monks and in a monastery and running a tea stand, which is the most precious thing. I've, I've got a lot of feelings about it and they're all very soft. Um, but if I had to describe the vibe, it might be like. granola steampunk oh <laughs> it's like a very like or no no cottagecore steampunk yeah because it kind of takes it like it doesn't have like, the harder edges of some of the steampunk stuff but it's still like integrating the technology in nature i don't know if there's an actual word for the aesthetic of this please let me know but that's what i've got currently um so the main character is a monk who decides to move from their position, which they're like staying in the city, to being a tea monk. Uh, their basic, their job is basically to like go from town to town and hold this free tea stand where people come and like vent and have tea, and they become like a tea connoisseur. It's, it's so good, it's so good. So, um. It's very soft, but it's interesting too, because even though like it's, it's interesting the different things that are normalized within this society, because even though some of it feels like older because of the bikes and stuff, there's some stuff that feels super, 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 um, futuristic with like the kind of mention of the computers and things. And obviously like the lore around the robots, which I have not mentioned, but is there, um, but there's also... Like, stuff around sexuality and gender is very, like, just chill. The main character's not binary. Um, or possibly agender. They use they, them pronouns. Uh, and when they meet somebody new, it's like, oh, do you have a gender? <laughs> it's like, that's so cool. And then it's, uh, I think the polyamory might be the default, too, which is also interesting. There's nothing to... Uh, show that monogamy is happening at all which is kind of cool um so yeah there are a lot of neat little bits in this book uh the way that it's written is kind of interesting because it's I mean you can see it's very short and already we've gone through the span of probably at least two and a half years I think um at this point uh so there is some stuff that would be technically like telling instead of showing which some people have a problem with, but I think the way that it's told, I'm really liking. Like, I like the... I like the way that the story's being told. We just met the robot. Monk and, ro or monk and robot book. We just met the robot. So, I'm excited to learn more about them. I finished a psalm for the wild belt and it was so good 
I have a lot of thoughts, but I almost don't want to talk about them just for like spoiler's sake. Like they aren't talking about the themes in a book isn't a spoiler, but I feel like I feel like it might be best to go in not really knowing everything to expect. Just because the experience of this book for me was very much the like the thing that I got out of this wasn't the plot. Um which, you know, is fine. Um it's not very fast paced, a uh, ton of ton of stuff doesn't happen, that's not the point of the book. But getting to know the characters and the things that they're learning and the detailed, or not detailed, but the the subtle things in the world building and in what the characters are learning, um, I feel like is a big part of the experience of reading this. I don't know if that makes sense, but I will say that it just felt very soft and comforting and warm. Um, this is about a monk who goes out and gives people tea and comforts them and I think that that is the vibe of this in a lot of ways. Um, even though, you know, they're trying to figure out stuff and in a lot of ways the main character is kind of stuck, but it's very soft and comforting. I don't know. I really liked it. Now I've got to pick what to read next. And I don't really know what to follow that vibe up with. Because this was so... Like, soft and good. Like, don't get me wrong, it definitely did make me feel things. And I, like, <laughs> cried at the end. Um, but it's, like, cathartic. And a lot of the stuff that made me feel things was, like, kind of realizing how hard I am on myself and how hard most people are on themselves and, like, that kind of a thing. But I don't know which book would be best to follow this up with. I do have my Buddy Read meetup on Tuesday. It's Monday. I do have more time tomorrow to read. Um... But I think that I might partly focus on catching up for that buddy read. And then depending on my mood around the buddy read, which is the buddy read is Black Skin White Masks by Friends Fanon. Um, depending on how I feel <laughs> around reading this, I might focus on Wake, uh, The Hidden History of Women Led, led, led Slave Revolts. Um, this is the one that's due sooner than everything else. It's due in three days, so I should probably read it sooner rather than later. But if but if I need something a little bit more calm, or if a lot of nonfiction just doesn't fit, whatever, um, I may start the Charm Offensive. Um, but I'll keep y'all updated with what goes on. What you doing, Remy? You're stepping on my books. That cannot be comfortable. What are you trying to do there, friend? I've been sitting here for an hour. You had plenty of time to cuddle. She just likes being the center of attention. Pretty baby. I was just looking on Goodreads in order to like put my little review and stuff like that. There's a second one! It's coming out eventually. It says expected publication 2022. Prayer for the Crown Shy. I'm so excited. The last line in the synopsis says, Becky Chambers' new series continues to ask, In a world where people have what they want, does having more even matter? Interesting. I'm I'm excited. When does it come out? I'm gonna have to figure that out. July. I'm excited. It's the evening on Tuesday now, so I thought I would do a little update. I haven't finished anything, but I worked on some stuff that's kind of cool. Um, 
I have been reading um, Philosophical Trends of the Feminist Movement, and I think I started that at the beginning of the month, but I got back into it during the reading hour with um, Audrey and Xander, and it's good so far. I mean, it's short, but gives a good, like, little overview of different, like, fields of thought in feminism. Um, or, well, it started with it, general history, but then um, I've read the sections on liberal feminism and most of radical feminism, and they give, like, an overview, um, kind of, of the philosophy and, like, very briefly, like, what was happening within different uh, waves of feminism, and then critiques them. So that has been a good time, and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. I also started to read Slug during the reading hour, and I didn't expect it to start that intensely. Like, I knew it was going to be, like, weird queer fiction, but it, like, starts out with, like, hardcore BDSM, which I was just not prepared for. I'm sure the story ends up being good, but, like, I... Gonna need to, like, think on that and come back to it when I'm a little bit ready for that. So, um, yeah, I got an email, too, saying that Wake is due in two days. So, that's probably what I'll read tomorrow. But, yeah. In a couple minutes, I'm gonna be meeting Brent to talk about our buddy read. We're going to be talking about chapter five of Black Skin, White Mask. Okay, it's the next day. We had a good little meeting. I say meeting. It's just like a regular phone call, but we also talked about the buddy read. Um, and it's going really well. It's a pretty intense book. We actually have our next buddy read lined up. So like as soon as we finish this book, the first week of March, we can get right into the next one. And I'm super stoked for it. Um, but... So far as today goes, this morning was kind of a wash. I didn't do very much. Or I guess that's a lie. I've, like, started to organize my laundry and some other things. Um, but I've got to bring Remy to the vet just for some blood work. And then I'm going to go to my mom's house to see them. Um... So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm bringing the secret lives of church ladies and um, philosophical trends of the feminist movement to pick from in case I feel like reading something, depending on what the weight looks like at the veterinarian. I know that I said that I need to read Wake, and I will, but I really feel like that's something that I can sit and read in a couple of sittings, and I don't think it would be a good idea to start it like in a waiting room. I don't know. I'm overthinking it. I'm bringing those things, so I may or may not read today, um, or at least not anytime soon, but I thought that I would still check in and all that stuff. This lighting hates everything. She doesn't know. She doesn't know she's about to go in the car. She's a good baby. So I didn't really read anything yesterday. But I did today. I finished Wake, which I'm going to have to go return to the library here in a moment. But, damn. Like, I thought that I was really going to like this because I like a good graphic nonfiction. I thought the topic sounded really interesting. Definitely not something that's talked about a whole lot. But it far surpassed my expectations. I will say that... I did not read the description of the book. I saw the cover and that was enough to make me want to read it. Um, I've seen it at work several times and I've like, you know, it's a hard cover. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm not going to buy that. But the library had it. So I like immediately needed to get it. This uh, is not just the history of women led slave uh, revolts. Uh, it definitely has several stories in there about that, but it is also about the experience of um, the historian putting together uh, her dissertation on women-led slave revolts. 
Um, I think she does this in like the early 2000s, maybe late 90s for some of it, but kind of that time period. She was um, an attorney, um, dealt with a lot of like racism and stuff within that, but she decided to go back to school um, in order to really get at kind of the root of what was going on. Um, and she goes in detail talking about the process, which I thought was really fascinating. She went through, um, all of these different places. It was very hard to find information, um, because there's a lot of stuff that people just simply did not write down. Um, they talked about there being, like, revolts, but they didn't really give specifics about the people who did them, um, very often. Especially not, like, if they were women or even, like, writing down, like, the gender or anything like that. And, um, she talks about how in a lot of the existing literature, people just say, oh, well, there weren't a lot of women. But the thing is, there wasn't, like, proof of there being women, but from my understanding, there also isn't proof that they're all men either. Um, so she talks about specific instances that she knew of, um... And kind of, like, shows that. And uh, it shows that as she's, like, going on uh, her actual journey of, like, finding all of this information. Um, she also talks about the issues that she encountered um, regarding just people being, like, racist and misogynist towards her trying to access the archives there are times when she's, like, made fun of by people, followed around by security, denied access to certain archives uh, because of who she is and what she's studying. And one of the things that I thought was incredibly important and incredibly powerful is also the discussion that she has about, um, like, what it's like studying this the kind of emotional toll, like, looking at, like, all of these logs of slave ships with, like, all of these numbers and how, like, emotionally detached, detached the documents are while it being such just a horrifically fucked up thing that's happened. Um, so she definitely doesn't shy away from that. I mean, it's not, like, n like, I think that, like, in context with the rest of the book, like, she spends a good amount of time pointing that out and then also includes little details, um, like, in the artwork to kind of show that grief as well. Um, and I think that's incredibly important, especially with this tendency in academia or the like demand to be like objective or appear objective I there's no ob objectivity um especially not when it comes to history or people but so she's talking about all of that and she also talks about um her ancestors specifically she tells the story of her grandmother who um was not enslaved but still encountered a lot of like racism and the like. I think, I think her grandmother passed in 1920. So I don't remember what the exact timeline was, but she still tells the story of her grandmother's resilience. She did a few things to kind of like illustrate her personal connection with all of that and talk about ancestry um, in ways that I thought were really beautiful and touching. Um, and the way that the book wraps up is incredible um because she again continues talking about like ancestry and history and how um how it's like ever present all that is to say this book is fucking brilliant um i always recommend graphic nonfiction to people who especially people who aren't used to reading nonfiction. i think it's a great way to go in um, this also has memoir components, which I think makes it, like, extra accessible. Um, 
And even if you are used to reading nonfiction, I think it's a really great book and highly recommend it. Um, I already had fairly high expectations for it because I just, I thought I would like it, but it, it was, it was awesome. And it was incredibly powerful, incredibly moving. Um, so I'm so glad that I was able to actually pick that up. So I'm going to be going to the library to drop this off. I'm not going to be getting more books because that would be asinine. Um, but I did think about it <laughs> just because I like a good little shopping trip. Um, and then, uh, I'll just go from there and see what I'm going to do. I think I might try to work more on philosophical trends in the feminist movement because I do want to finish that before the end of the month. Um, but I was also thinking of reading some out of, um, a book that I've not talked about yet. Remy, I need to go get the book from the table for you please can I get down or can you get down so I can get down I was thinking about reading a little bit out of lessons in liberation an abolitionist toolkit for educators this is something that I got from AK press in like December and it was on a TBR uh and I just haven't really got around to reading any of it and I have a couple of other things I'd really like to read uh kind of regarding this, especially after reading We Do This Till We Free Us. I've got several that I would like to get to that could be up on a list to read relatively soon. So, um, Philosophical, philosophical Trends of Fem Feminist Movement, Lessons in Abolition, and then I'll get back to some library books. I haven't actually set up my camera because I've been a little bit afraid to take it out of its case since it's like on its last leg but I'm reading right now and I kind of wish that I had had it set up both of them have decided to join me hello so I've got one in my lap and one on me or right beside me basically on my arm she was trying to eat the book earlier and I have also been petting her as I'm reading and yet the corner of my book is still what you choose to chew on. You have nothing to say for yourself. Hmm. Okay. So I finished Philosophical Trends in the Feminist Movement. I keep trying to recap. And it's very word salad. It's 1am and she keeps trying to crawl inside of my face. That's where we're at. See, Miss Ma'am, no remorse. No remorse. I don't understand. I love you, but you have to stop. So, this gave a brief rundown of several common um, trends in Western feminist philosophical thought. Liberal, radical, anarcha, eco, socialist, and postmodern. Feminism. So she addresses each one of these individually, kind of talks about the history, and gives some sort of critique. Um, some of these, uh, like, have a history section and then a critique section. Some of them are kind of mixed. It just sort of depends on, I guess, how much she has to say, but also, like, the prevalence. Because, like, the... Um, weight that's put on liberal feminism and the role that is played in the western feminist movement is very different from like anarcho feminism so um i thought uh that it was very good especially for like the length it's very small so it's not like like if you're looking to have a 100 percent understanding and grasp on like the historical nuances of like, every single thing that happened. Obviously, that's not what this book is for. But it does go over stuff very briefly, kind of defines some different perspectives within them, um, and gives some really solid critique in talking about how, like, you know, within all of these, they're coming from a very white, middle-class, um, American perspective, and not really considering even, like, 
women of color in the United States, let alone people in the global South. So certainly not considering imperialism um, or anything like that. And really not even advocating for revolutionary like action um, in a lot of ways. So the critique is very interesting. Um, I would really love to see something like this, but on like a larger scale. Like, I know that she has other writings, so I might look into that. But, yeah, basically it was very good, even if it was short. Um, it makes me kind of want to revisit some of those different um, perspectives, kind of with this kind of in mind. Especially because it's been a while since I've looked at a lot of feminist theory. Like, I feel like there's some that I interact with a lot more frequently than others. I teach a feminist uh, or an intro to women's studies class, so, like, I'm thinking about definitely more feminist theory than the average person, however, the specific fields of thought, um, and, like, you know, dissecting them and stuff like that, I have not been in that mindset for a minute, um, so I might pull out some old textbooks and glance over some stuff or something. Uh, that's what I have for today. Um, I also got, um, an audiobook off of hold. Um, Gear Breakers came in. I only listened to, like, maybe 10 minutes of it at work. Um, I, I can't decide if I'm in the mood for it or not, so we'll see if I end up listening to it or putting it back on hold, um, and coming back to it later. It's really hard to say. I don't know why I wasn't, like, feeling it. I don't know if I was just, like, busy or if I want something that's just different. Um, I'll update when I have an answer on that. Um, I work tomorrow as well, so I'll see how I feel when trying to listen to it um, when I work then, assuming that I have more than the ten minutes that I had today. Is this the attention that you ordered? You act as though I haven't been giving you attention for the past while. If I so much as stop the scritch. She's unsettled. Constant scritches or violence. That's what we're faced here with, people. <laughs> He's a good baby. Even if she gets a little bit too short. Alright, it's Saturday. Um, and it is Queer Weekend. Which, I don't think that I realized that this weekend was Queer Weekend when I started this vlog. Um, but... Uh, of the library books that I have yet to read, I'm pretty sure there are two that are queer. I don't think the other ones are, but I could be wrong. Um, for sure, obviously, The Charm Offensive and Slug. So, um, eventually, over the course of the weekend, hopefully I can read one or both of those. We'll see. Um... I'm also considering, though, beside me, I have the Charm Offensive, uh, because I think I talked about it in the last clip with, uh, like, the audiobook that I was reading kind of felt too intense, so I think that, like, Fluffy might be right for now, but I also kind of want to read poetry, um, and so I have... Um, one of the Raquel Salas Rivera books that I picked up, I say one of, this is the only one that I have, but I read another one of theirs a while back. Um, so I'm going to read one of these, start one of these tonight. We'll see what happens. I do kind of have a headache, um, 
which complicates things. So I might do an ebook instead. I found, or not ebook, audio. I did find a Jack Halberstam book. I think it's the Queer Art of Failure. I considered listening to that. So that might happen instead. Um, I might just do nothing. Honestly, my brain has been kind of just going everywhere. I filmed the podcast with Alex, um, earlier, which was a lot of fun. I th- I think that it was a good conversation. Um, but after working a full day, then doing that, my brain has just been, like, going 500 different places, so I don't know if what all's going to happen, uh, which I think is another reason why poetry might be a good idea, if not the short story collection. I basically don't know what's going to happen, but something might, um, and it's going to be gay. So that's the update I have. Oh, also another cool update. So I think I talked about this phone being cracked to shit um, earlier. M- new phone came in the mail. Um, I'm not going to finish the vlog on this, even though the camera is better, uh, because I don't know if it will fuck with the frame rate or whatever. I don't think it would, but I'm not about to take chances. I already have a hard enough time with electronics. Um, but this is probably going to be the last vlog with this quality. I mean, I don't know necessarily how big of a difference this will make, but I'm excited. Um... To have a a new thing. I saw that Alex posted on his Instagram that he was doing reading sprints over on his channel. So I joined those and ended up reading XXX's Poems for the Nation by Raquel Salas Rivera. And this was very good. This is a poetry collection that speaks to their experience as a uh, trans Puerto Rican. There are poems in here about dysphoria, some about like dealing with family, what it's like to be. Um, like living off of the islands towards the end and there's a lot in here on like colonialism like the issues that are going on within Puerto Rico like they mentioned specific things like wages but also just the United States as a colonial entity dealing with fascism and just dealing with the realities the dangers of being um trans and Puerto Rican in different spaces. Um, Remy is here again um, to be on the camera. She has not been in my lap the whole time I was reading. She was on the floor, but now she wants to join me. You got a messy nose. What you got on your nose? You got crumbs. You're messy. Anyways, um... I feel like I didn't have my words very well together for the last wrap-up or this one, but the TLD, the, the TLDR, I feel like that's cringy, but not that I've, I've committed a lot of cringe in my life. Maybe I shouldn't be too worried about the TLDR. <laughs> Anyways, this is a very good poetry collection. It was beautifully written. I really wish that I could read Spanish. Every poem is, it has it in English and in Spanish. And I would be really interested to see what Spanish speakers take on some of this is, because I would be interested to know, um, about the language choices, because I know that with translation, um, you know, the different things are going to have different meanings. And I'm sure that there are some things in here that I didn't get because I only, read and understood the English, um, translations of the poems. And more people really need to read this. I think only three people, no, not three, twice as many, six. Only six people have rated this on Goodreads. The other book that I had read, um, I think has, 
uh, over 100, 134, which also isn't very many. Um, but if y'all read poetry, check out Raquel Salas Rivera. They've got at least one poetry collection that at least the library was available on Hoopla. This I was able to order through, like, a mainstream bookstore, so check it out. So far as the rest of the weekend, I actually, while I was reading, got in my um, hold on Last Night at the Telegraph Club, the audiobook. So I might be listening to that at work tomorrow. Probably not the whole thing, but I'll probably start it. Um, assuming it's not too busy to at least listen to a little bit here and there. Um, so I'll hop that. Um, so I'll check back in once I've done significant amount of reading on something. All right. It is now late in the day, Sunday. So thought I'd give a little recap last day of the queer weekend or the second half of the queer weekend. I didn't finish anything, but I did start on the audiobook of Last Night at the Telegraph Club and I'm really liking it. I'm about 37% of the way through that. And the other thing that I read that's related to Queer Weekend is a part of You'll Get Through This Night, uh, which is a buddy read that I'm doing with my friend Amanda, and we're going to be meeting to talk about it tomorrow morning, actually. Uh, I kind of forgot how far I was supposed to read, and I think I stopped at the right spot. Um, so, those two, plus the one that I finished, that was my queer weekend. Um, the other thing that I've been reading is Black Skin, White Masks, because I am uh, meaning to talk about this chapter on Tuesday night, and, uh, this is the longest chapter of the book, um, so it's gonna be my main focus until Tuesday. That's the little reading update for today. It is Sunday night? No, it is not Sunday. It's Monday night. Oh my gosh. Uh, it is Monday night. This morning I met up with my friend to talk about Dan's book. It was a good time. I finished my audiobook of Last Night at the Telegraph Club and I loved it. I was engaged from the get-go and uh, I even like listened through it on my lunch break, which usually... Usually I'll pause my audiobook and because I want to like check social media and maybe work on my physical book while I can on my regular, uh, on my break. But I didn't really want to do that. I just wanted to keep reading it. So, uh, it was very good. I really enjoyed the characters. I really, really appreciate and admire the amount of research that went into it. Um, I'm definitely going to be scouring the bibliography, <laughs> I like that they kind of talked about a lot of that in the author's note. Um, uh, something that really struck me, like, there there were several, like, really kind of important things to talk about and unpack regarding, um, like, xenophobia and, like, the intersection of racism and homophobia racism, like, within the queer community. There was so much there to unpack. But one thing of note, one thing that struck me, like, on a personal level is, um, kind of some of the discussion around shame. It was so fucking cool. One of the things that struck me, um, at a certain point in the book, uh, well, several different times she, like, talks about shame. Like, from the beginning of the book, she talks about being, like, you know, worried about being caught doing different things, feeling like, you know, reading the gay book, you know, in the corner store or whatever is, like, bad or shameful. And it's this recurring thing that she kind of talks about, like, like, details about, like, diverting her eyes and a lot of that stuff. And, and that is something that's highly relatable, um, you know, as 
somebody who grew up being scared of going into Victoria's Secret. Like, <laughs> that's, that's very relatable. But also, at a certain point, she says, she goes from, like, describing the shame or describing the different things that she does um, in that regard to, I know that I should feel ashamed, but I don't. And that kind of turn, uh, that just gave me a lot of feelings. And then there are also a lot of other really important, you know, things that we could talk about in terms of this book. I will say that I wish that there was a little bit more, um, cohesion or, like, uh, maybe I missed something, um... But I, th I think it's interesting that she decided to go back and forth a little bit and look into the parents, um, or the mom in particular, her background. Um, I think that it maybe gives us a little bit of a picture of, like, where her mom is coming from in her concern and in, like, going from the place that she was... In regards to looking at, like, Chinese politics and stuff like that to where she is now. When, like, in the beginning she was really, really talking up the, I guess, anti-communist um, propaganda. Because she had to for, like, safety. If she didn't, you know, um, you'd get deported. But that was, uh, like, interesting to see. And I... I think is an important point. However, I don't know if that was... That's something that I took out of it. But I don't know if it was... Like, I, I think I might have liked to see it be emphasized, like, a little bit more. Um, and... Potentially. And or see their story brought into, uh, thematically into the narrative a little bit better. Because, like, it talks about them falling in love. They do go to, like, a bar or nightclub at some point. Um, but I don't, I don't think that I saw enough links between their story and the current story to, like, justify why it was there a hundred percent because I feel like if it was just to show that they're like super super concerned in the way that I was reading you know what I just explained um I feel like there are different ways to show that that would take up less time um maybe I just missed something um, but, like, that was one part of the story that I kind of wished had been, like, tied up a little bit better, um, because I, I think that it's a very interesting choice. I just feel like it wasn't used to its full potential. That, that was really my main kind of criticism. I also feel like some different political things probably could have been said, um, regarding Red Scare stuff, but, um... I kind of understand why you maybe couldn't do that in a young adult publishing traditionally. But yeah, overall, I really, really enjoyed it. There's actually one more thing that I wish that I knew a little bit more about regarding Kath towards the end. But I can't really be more specific than that because it would be spoilery. But yeah, overall, I thought it was really great. And I think with that, I'm going to wrap up this reading vlog because it has been a little bit more than a week was a nice little time to focus on library books. I will hopefully finish the rest of them. I still have like a week to finish them. Plus I can renew them once, assuming that none of them get put on hold. So, um, I know that I, I kind of wanted to finish Slug because I had like started it. So I kind of wanted to still, like, be able to talk about it in the vlog, because I feel like the only thing that I said about it was, like, I had to put it down and not read it, but, like, I'm sure that it's cool. It just caught me off guard a little bit. Um, but I do plan on reading the rest. If you've watched this far in the video, thank you, honestly. I'm sure that this one's gonna be really long. Um, yeah, in the comments, let me know about your 
most recently read library book or one of your favorites that you've read recently that you borrowed from the library. And thank you all so much for watching. Bye. Say goodbye.